Hi, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Wonder Snatch. I'm a drag queen who loves makeup, LGBT stuff and musical theatre and tonight I'm getting ready to go out on the town, alright? And I really want to talk about all the drag bands that are happening in America right now, okay? It's really upsetting and really crazy that drag is being under attack, okay, in America and, and I really hope this doesn't spread to the rest of the world. So come and get ready with me and I'm going to go out in this neon club. Actually, my very first <laughs> look was a neon look. See how much I've evolved, all right? This neon look to go out on the town, all right? All right, so don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> I'm back, blocked out my brows and everything. Okay, so just gonna get right into this. So yeah, drag is under attack in America, of all places. The country of RuPaul's Drag Race, RuPaul and all sorts of legendary queens is under attack. I mean, RuPaul did say, you know, from the beginning of Drag Race, he, one of his goals was to bring drag to all corners of America, okay? I think he said something like, you know, um, Jerry and Mildred beer can or something, so he wanted to bring drag into middle America. But now that he has done that, it seems like it's set up for an easy target. Drag is, you know, the purest form of queer art. It's born out of gender exploration, gender performance, okay? It pokes fun at society and gender roles. And when little queer boys and girls grow up fighting against these gender roles, drag is usually what results from that. A lot of the techniques from drag does come from, you know, gender performance and stuff like that. And of course, we learned a lot from trans women who had to, you know, figure out ways to pass as women when surgery wasn't very accessible. Okay, so all these things about all my taping, blocking brows, redrawing eyebrows, body shaping, everything all comes from the transgender community and theatre. And, and, and as I have already mentioned, the art of drag is not just, you know, putting on a dress and prancing around, although that's what some straight male politicians do. Okay, I'll get to that later. It's, it's a way for us to, to express all these, like, you know, repressed feelings that we have growing up, okay? Any queer kid knows that they've been told they can't do this, they can't do that, they can't wear wigs, they can't put on makeup. So drag is a, a rebellion against all this, okay? And it is inherently political. And that's why it is under attack now, okay? I mean, the whole thing about gender, you know, being a construct or being... We can't really say it's being constructed because it's very real, okay? But it is an Indian performance, right? And that is because gender is so pervasive in the society that we've grown up in. The society has told us exactly what a, what men is supposed to be and what a woman is supposed to be. And this is so ingrained in us. It's just, you know, it's like everywhere that gender identity, although very real to some, it is Indian performance. It's something you're putting on, okay, to fit into society in some way. And drag is a way to, you know, try to dismantle that. And that threatens a lot of people. And to do drag, any, any performer has to ask his questions, his relation to gender, his relation to the art that he's doing, okay? Not just putting on a dress and acting silly. That is the kind of drag that, you know, sometimes does not reflect the true spirit of drag. It's a NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop concealer that I got in London. And now that drag has, you know, become pretty much mainstream, or even even if it's not mainstream, it is at least seen in a lot more places than it used to be, a lot of the red states are feeling very threatened by this, and they know that drag threatens, okay, their hold on people's idea about gender and about self-expression and about individuality. And, and these bands, and there's nothing new, I mean, People have been against drag and gender non-conformity for a very, very long time. I mean, drag queens used to be institutionalized. Okay, they used to be used to be a mental illness to want to wear clothes of the opposite gender. In New York, okay, even in the early 20th century, there were even laws against wearing articles of clothing that did not correspond to your perceived gender. And so all these new anti-drag laws are all nothing really new okay it's all come full circle and um it's just something that we have to be very very aware of i mean you know even apparently even the art of lip syncing was born out of these anti-drag anti-trans laws in the past drag queens or you know uh, were considered adult entertainers this, this is not new either there's adult entertainers and you're not allowed to interact with them okay not allowed to touch them or anything and you weren't allowed to um tip them directly so you had to like leave your tips on the counter and they'll come and take it and you weren't allowed to have live music in these establishments okay and that's why 
people started playing, you know, music and lip syncing to it. So apparently that's how the lip sync was born. Or at least one of the stories. So a lot of drag and a lot of the stuff that we are used to what a drag performance is, is really tied to history of oppression. Okay, today's look is going to be a neon -y look. Yeah, and so these kind of acts used to be classified under adult cabaret, okay? The word cabaret does hold, apparently, a lot of negative connotations in most countries. Um, a definition of a cabaret in a lot of law books and everything is like smutty, taking clothes off and stuff like that. So apparently, even in Singapore, if you use the word cabaret to apply for an entertainment license, you would actually, you know, have a lot of trouble from all that also what I've heard. And that's why I'm called Quabbering. Many of these laws that are making their way through courts all over America was passed recently in Tennessee. There has been a little bit of overblown reaction when it was first introduced into as a bill in Tennessee. It was actually aiming to ban all drag performers from public spaces, okay, or in front of children. But I think they apparently they've amended the language to be a little less shocking, okay, because um, this uh, an outright ban would be against the First Amendment, okay, against the First Amendment in America, which talks about free speech and all that and freedom of expression. So um, right now, from what I understand, it is basically it's still quite vague, okay, but it basically restricts performers, adult cabaret performers, which includes people who um, do female or male impersonation, i.e., wearing clothes. Um, and performing as your opposite gender in uh, public spaces, but these acts have to be of a prurient nature, okay? So, I, a prurient basically means titillating or something that is sexy or something like that, you know? And it's left very vague, so obviously it is up to law enforcement to pick and choose who they want to criminalize for this. And of course, these anti-drag laws, they are masking a wider kind of an anti-trans kind of sentiment, okay? They don't care who's a drag queen or who's a trans individual. In these conservatives' mind, it doesn't make a difference, okay? They just want to stamp out gender non-conformity. Okay. I'm going to do my brows first. They probably don't even care to acknowledge a difference between a person in drag or a transgender individual because now they can use, they can apply this law to anyone who's wearing clothing of their, you know, opposite sex. Whether it's a drag performer traveling between clubs or a transgender person living their own lives. So it's very, very sneaky, this law. And so this law was recently passed in Tennessee, and there are many laws, similar laws, um, in other states, making their way through other states, okay, like Kentucky, Idaho, okay, and they're pretty much all copy and paste, okay, um, apparently they're not very original, and of course it's because this is the issue du jour, um, they're all this going through some conservative playbook to try to ban drag all over America. So that actually causes a lot of issues if you want to, you know, plan, let's say, a pride parade. Some of these states are actually thinking of cancelling their pride their pride marches because they don't know how they're going to be able to protect the drag queens in the streets, especially if a lot of these states also have conceal and carry where they, people can just carry firearms all over the place. These eyebrows look completely different. All right, I'm just going to powder my face quickly and I'll be right back. All right, okay, so I've... Um, I'm starting to bake. Okay, I've set everything. And now I'm going to go into my search palette again. I'm going to go into this green eye. Green and then with a pop of neon here and there. All right, I'm going to use this lush, very, very deep green. Just start putting that in the crease. This whole drag band thing, it's not really what they're all going after, okay? It's an easy target, okay? But you know, in Tennessee, in the very same day, okay, uh, Senator Ben Lee, he passed another law um, basically banning gender-affirming surgery and treatment for trans kids. Okay, so this was actually something that they are passing together with all these horrible laws. So that's why we can't dissociate all the anti-drag sentiments from the anti-trans sentiments. And if you think about it, a lot of these laws are there to basically appease the really religious right, okay, the evangelicals, who, who don't make that much noise. But the Republican politicians know, especially the politicians who have been, you know, coming into, after Trump and all this MAGA nonsense, okay, these people have got power because they've been voted in by a lot of people who subscribe to these views. They know that 
all these issues will win them the evangelical vote, okay? Not only anti-drag, anti-trans stuff, but also anti-abortion and stuff like that, okay? All these things are, which are basically upholding, you know, make America great again, the glorious past where you don't have to think about gay people, don't have to think about all these gender expression, they, them pronouns and all this stuff. Okay, and then blend this out, out with a lie. So you can see that, you know, the conservative movement is alive and well, and they are going after a lot of these progressive things. I mean, if you think about it, even Mike Pence, right? He he can't even look at another woman without thinking he's cheating on his wife, okay? Every, they sexualize everything. I mean, they think drag is like sexualized and um, not suitable for children, but they are the ones putting the kids in pageant outfits, dra dresses and stuff like that. There's drag everywhere. There's drag and gender performance everywhere. I mean, even like, let's say Baywatch, okay? There's a lot more sex going on in Baywatch than any drag show, okay? Or even like, you know, anything on TV or even like wrestling, right? There's a lot of gender performance, a lot of hyper-masculine performance in wrestling. But of course, drag is the first thing that gets banned. <laughs> even before they ban guns in, in these states. And as I mentioned earlier, this is basically just the issue du jour, okay? It used to be things like bathroom bills, um, banning trans athletes. They're just trying every single way to see how they can dismantle this new progressive way of thinking about gender. It's very, very disingenuous and almost phony because, as you know and as you've seen, a lot of these politicians themselves have partook in drag before. I mean, Ben Lee himself was shown to be frolicking in a mini, mini dress on a football field. Okay, but of course he dismisses as hijinks and as straight man hijinks. But it's okay, you know, when a white man does it for fun and laughs. But you know, when someone does it for their livelihood and their identity, that's when it's wrong. Okay, I think I'm going to go for a blackish smoky eye. Okay, I'm going to press in some of this um, neon or chemistry into these things. So of course, there are a lot of drag queens who have come up against this ban. Even RuPaul, but although RuPaul does sound like he was a little bit bullied into it by the, by the internet, okay, he did come up with this statement saying that, you know, um, social media post isn't as good as going out to vote, but I think he's wrong, okay? A social media post from RuPaul would actually be pretty amazing at, you know, getting this issue out onto people. Okay, I'm going to try to use this potted black and to try to draw my ring okay as well as my inner corner black okay like that then i'm going to smudge that in And, you know, in Tennessee, of course, um, this season of Drag Race, Aura Mayari is on there. So Aura Mayari has been speaking up a lot about this. And also, um, Lady Bunny grew up in Tennessee. So she had a lot to say on um, the most recent episode of uh, Ebony and Irony. I think it just takes, they just have to arrest one drag queen for everyone <laughs> to, to come and support them and the ACLU to come in to fight this and, you know, quash these stupid laws because they are really unconstitutional. So today is going for a bit of a halo eye, a green, a lime green halo eye. So I'm just going to put some black here. I want to go into a lime, so maybe something a bit more yellow. Actually, I'm going to go into yellow first. Okay, and then I think I'm going to use orange to try to blend those in. Okay, something like that. I'm just going to finish these eyes off really quickly and I'll be right back. All right, so finished off the eye. It's a nice halo with a bit of a lemon lime pop of glitter in the middle. I'm just going to contour the rest of my face now and do my lips. Oh yeah, and the glitter that I'm using is this lemon cake from Midas Cosmetics. I bought this like a couple of years ago and never used it until now. It's really, really nice. It's like... Um, yellow with um, a green kind of a lime shift perfect for this look so basically in these states neo-nazis and hate groups can still you know gather and rally and protest and everything but drag queens can't okay that's really really crazy okay and it is 
basically a way to stifle freedom of expression. And censoring these kind of ideas and expressions is exactly how authoritarian regimes begin, okay? They have almost exactly the same kind of laws and the same kind of sentiments in places like Poland and Russia, so apparently in Brazil as well. And the way that they weaponize, okay, gender ideas and everything is very, very autocratic. They always mask it behind this whole thing about, you know, protecting the children, they're calling drag queens groomers and stuff like that. Of course, there are some drag acts that are not appropriate for children, and these are in establishments where children shouldn't be going anyway, okay? Just as there are pop acts or movies and stuff like that that aren't suitable for children. I think in the end, it really is boils down to individual choice, okay? And, re and, and the parents' decision on whether they want to expose and when they want to expose their children to drag. And in fact, on top of all this, there are some politicians calling for the eradication of transgenderism. That doesn't harken back to certain <laughs> regimes in World War II, I don't know what does. Gay people, lesbians, anyone should really be alarmed by these kind of laws. I think today's brows will be a little bit pink to match my wig. Okay, filled my brows. <laughs> Very pink and green today, which is going to be my outfit. So these laws obviously are not going to be applied <laughs> fairly or evenly, okay? The white frat boys who dress up in drag for parties and walking down the street will probably not bear the brunt of any of these laws. Okay, the vague wording prurient interest could mean anything, okay? Even someone wearing, let's say, a breastplate or something might, might, be, might get into trouble. Drag queens marching in parades and trans people going, going about their daily lives are probably going to be the ones that are most affected by these laws. Okay, and it's going to make police, policemen take sides. And we really have to see how this plays out. All right, I'm just going to throw on a lip and I'll be right back with some finishing touches and a vlog, okay, on my night out tonight. All right, I'll be right back. So now I am at Suntech City going to the party Unleash. Uh, give it gay party. I'm in my raver outfit. Actually back from the club, makeup is still pretty intact and I didn't manage to do any interviews at all. <laughs> Everyone was too busy and everyone's too, you know, it's too loud and everything. So I didn't actually make any video there. But um, there's some videos here of all the drag queens in Singapore really having a good time. So um, if you like this video, um, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and ring that bell for post notifications. Okay, I'm going to get out of drag now and maybe have some supper. <laughs> and of course, um, please um, donate to the ACLU or all, all the links I'm going to include in the description below to help all the legal battles that are upcoming, okay? For all these horrible, horrible anti-drag and anti-trans bills all across America. All right? We're, we're all here in solidarity with you guys in America, okay? So stay safe, okay? And yeah, fight back. <laughs> Bye.
Er. <laughs> all right, check out my other videos, all right? Check out the full show of Disney and also my Christmas show, all right? Di Disco's coming out, okay, get your tickets. It's gonna be a huge one. Get out of the bag.